All right, guys, today we're going to do part one of um, rational expressions, which is chapter uh, P6 in your textbook. Um, we're going to deal with multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And then for part two, we'll go ahead and do some addition and subtraction. All right. Um, so what's a rational expression? Um, you'll see division. It's basically division of two uh, polynomials. So you could have 1 divided by x, or x plus 1 over x minus 1. These are all division, right, fractions. Um, division of two polynomials. Um, now remember, your denominator cannot be 0. You cannot divide by 0. So that's one thing that we're going to talk about throughout this entire chapter, is understanding um, the restrictions on your domain, right? Your denominator cannot be 0. So we're actually going to talk about domain throughout this entire section. Um, so the first one says, example one says, find all the numbers that must be excluded from your domain. Um, so remember, your denominator cannot equal 0. So we know x plus 5 cannot equal 0. So subtract 5 from both sides. x cannot equal negative 5. Okay. So numbers that have to be excluded from our domain, we cannot use negative 5. Um, here, again, x squared minus 36, my denominator cannot equal 0. Add 36, x squared cannot equal 36, um, which means x cannot equal positive or negative 6. All right, positive or negative 6. Running out of room a little bit here, but we're going to go ahead and this denominator, we're going to factor it. Um, so what do we have? x times x is x squared. Uh, we need it to multiply to negative 14 and add to negative 5. So 7 and 2. And if we have negative 7 times positive 2, negative 7 times positive 2 is negative 14, and negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. We cannot have those equal to 0. So we know x minus 7 can't equal 0, and x minus plus, sorry, 2, 2 cannot equal 0. Um, so x cannot equal 7, and x cannot equal negative 2. So those are restrictions on our domain. All right, so you might have to factor, you might have to take some square roots, just pay attention to what makes that denominator equal 0. Um, simplifying. Simplifying, you want to make sure you are factored. You want to make sure you are factored. Um, so here I see a GCF of x squared. I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. And if you factor out an x squared, you're left with x plus 3. And in the bottom, you have x plus 3. So we can cancel those out, and we get x squared. Um, again, we want to talk about restrictions. right? We know x plus 3 cannot equal 0, so we know x cannot equal negative 3. So there's your restriction on your domain. And we're going to talk about this on every problem. Here, let's go ahead and make sure it's factored. Now, I know it's tempting to just say, oh, there's an x squared and x squared. I'm going to cancel them out. You cannot do that. You can only do it when you're dealing with multiplication. So see how this is x squared times x plus 3? That's why you could cancel out that whole x plus 3. Here, we're going to factor x squared minus 1 is x plus 1, x minus 1. Remember, difference of squares, difference of two perfect squares. Um, the bottom, we're going to go ahead and factor that. Let's see what we got here. Multiplies to 1, adds to 2. So we got positive 1 times positive 1 is positive 1, and positive 1 plus positive 1 is positive 2. And now that we're in multiplication, right, this times this and this times this, now we can cancel. So one of those can cancel with one of those, and that's it. So we're left with x minus 1 over x plus 1. Again, you cannot just mix out those x's. You have to be dealing in terms of multiplication to cancel out. Um, now, when you're writing restrictions on your domain, you always look back to the original, or the factored original, but the original in general. So we know x um, plus 1. Well, actually, it's both of them, uh, cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal negative 1. All right. 
Um, <clears throat> multiplying and dividing, you still want to start with simplifying. You do not want to sit there and say x plus 3 times all of this. Um, that's a lot of uh, foiling. Um, that's a lot of distributing. So my advice is to try and simplify it first. So let's factor anything we can factor. Um, this is difference of squares, x plus 2, x minus 2. And then multiply. Um, here, we want things that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. Multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1, so 3 and 2. And we want a negative 1, so negative 3 and positive 2. Now in the bottom, you have multiplies to 9, adds to 6. Multiplies to 9, adds to 6. Um, I'm going to say 3 times 3 is 9, 3 plus 3 is 6. So now that you're all factored, anything you have in the top can cancel with anything you have in the bottom. So I have an x plus 3 in the top. I have an x plus 3 in the bottom. They can cancel out. I have an x plus 2 in the top and I have an x plus 2 in the bottom. They can cancel out. Um, so again, anything in the top can cancel with anything in the bottom. I don't see anything else that cancels, so we're done. x minus 3 over. And you don't have to FOIL that back out. Just go ahead and leave it as it is. And there's your multiplied answer. Um, so you definitely want to simplify before you start your problem. So that way you don't have to simplify in the end. Um, let's talk about domain restrictions. Again, look back to the original. Here we know x squared. And you can actually look back to the factored original if you want to. This is still before you cancel anything. You know x cannot equal 2 or negative, sorry, 2 or negative 2, yeah. And it cannot equal negative 3 because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So you always want to look back to the original before you canceled anything. Before you canceled anything. Because in the original, you can't have a 0 down here, even before you multiplied. All right, moving on. Um, division. You guys remember keep, change, flip? Keep, change, flip. Um, instead of doing division, we want to do multiplication. But we're still going to start the same way. Go ahead and factor. Um, so x squared minus 2x plus 1 uh, multiplies to 1, adds to negative 2 would be negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. The bottom, it looks like we have a GCF of x, which leaves us with x squared plus 1. Um, change to multiplication and flip. So again, this is going to be on top now. Uh, it looks like we have a GCF of 3. And when we factor it out, x squared plus 1. And this is, we're flipping this one. Okay, keep, change, flip. Um, so we're on the top now. Uh, multiplies to negative 2 adds to 1. Multiplies to negative 2 would be 2 and 1. And we want a positive 1. So positive 2 minus 1. So we took a division problem and we changed it to multiplication. Keep, right, stays in the same order, change to multiplication, and we flipped. And we factored while we were doing all that. Now whatever's in the top cancels with whatever's in the bottom. So I see one of these, and I look down here, it goes with one of those. I see one of these and one of these, and that's it. So we have 3 times x minus 1. Again, you don't have to uh, distribute or anything. Just leave it as is. x plus 2. And that one's done. Um, let's talk about domain restrictions. Let's talk about domain restrictions here. Um, so again, you want to look back to the original. You want to look back to the original. We don't want x to equal, let's see, we don't want x to be 0. Um, 
we don't want x squared, here, I'm going to put this over here, x squared plus 1 to equal 0, right? Um, but here, x squared, if you subtract 1 from both sides, uh, you wind up with imaginary anyway, so there's no way this is going to become 0. So we don't have to worry about that one. Um, x plus 2 equals 0. Uh, we don't want x to be negative 2. And that's an x minus 1. x minus 1 equals 0. We don't want x to be 1. All right. That's it for that one. Um, I think that's it for this. Yep, tomorrow we'll do adding and subtracting. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, get your homework done, get it turned in.